Good morning. I am going to be on this side of the screen because I'm going to have pop-ups come up on this side of the screen. And I am also going to be reading off of my iPad for the majority of this, which is right in front of me. So if I'm not looking directly into your eyes, that's why. But anyway, to start the story, I was in New York for New Year's and I had a fabulous time visiting various art galleries including the Met, the Guggenheim, and a few other smaller galleries. I felt so inspired and I made sure to take a ton of pictures of like shapes I like that stood out to me, buildings, and just other things in general that I might want to paint. So, as we were leaving our hotel, I took this really snazzy picture of it and I found it later going through my gallery, of course, because it's in there. I took the picture and I decided I wanted to paint it. And I wanted to recreate it by using a few of the most prominent shapes that I thought would be the coolest um, and then figure out the color scheme after the sketch, right? So as I was thinking, I was like, but I literally just got Procreate, so why would I do all this extra work when I could just outline the buildings itself on Procreate, learn how to use this new application, and come out with a much more refined product, right? Um, so, starting my creative process, <laughs> since I was going into this not knowing anything, I was pleasantly surprised when I found out just how convenient this approach was, but it wasn't until a lot of trial and error. I promise you, halfway through this approach, I thought I had made a mistake because it would just have been so much easier following steps of something I already knew how to do, but learning something new was very beneficial and I'm glad that I did. Draft one, 50 minutes of doing things the hard way. So initially I was going to use a blue, gray, and white color scheme to match what was already there. But during this draft, I was literally zooming in on every little area to make sure the lines were as straight as possible. The playbacks don't include how many times I zoomed in or the little intricacies of what I was doing. So that's why I find it a little helpful to explain more things than not. Anyway, I was not familiar with the function of layers, so the colors were just doing weird things, and I just didn't like the color scheme in general, so I decided to scratch the whole page, research how to use a little bit more of Procreate, and then just start a whole new page. I learned a couple things, of course, while going through this trial and error. The first thing that I learned is that two shapes that are touching each other will fill together. There was other situations where two shapes were touching each other and I'd fill one of them one color and the other one would fill a different color and that was just really weird in and of itself I didn't know what was going on but I did learn that if I put the shapes in separate layers then that doesn't happen another thing that I learned is that there is a stabilizer setting in the brush setting there's another way to get to it, but it was pretty easy just clicking on the brush that I needed and then going into those stabilizer settings. And the app automatically screen records. There is a specific image quality setting that you should choose before starting. And then once you choose that, you don't have the option to change the quality setting afterwards. You have a few other settings, which honestly, I don't really know what they do, but you can't go back in to change what you've already done. So then my next draft, draft two, is two hours of almost getting it right. So I started my second draft thinking that I would create each shape in a different layer, make each shape a bright color just to see what I'm working with, and then figure out the color scheme in the end. Now mind you, I don't have an apple working pencil still at this point so i'm going in with the stabilizer setting at max but i'm still zooming in to a lot of the sections to outline them because i would just like to be as precise as possible once i finish my 40th shape i go to create another layer and it doesn't let me so i'm panicking because I've spent over two hours total at this point 
on this project trying to figure everything out and I'm just like what is going on so I'm like okay well I guess I can just go back in and add the shapes to the layers that I you know have already done or whatever but the way that I'm doing it I'm doing all of the layers beside each other so I get just to the last few and then the last few are still kind of touching I don't know it's weird I mess it up and even though I finish outlining all the shapes and I start putting everything in a grayscale I lost one of the layers so I'd have to go back in and redo it anyway or like one of the shapes and there was a few layers right beside each other that shouldn't have been so it was messing me up again and it was confusing and it was complicated and I didn't want to deal with it anymore so I was like okay scratch that scratch that now we're at the second few things that I learned one if you're going to have a lot of layers decide from the beginning how you're going to add multiple shapes in the same layer so that they won't mess up when you need to recolor them or edit them or whatever whatever number your layers on your drawing and i did get an apple pen after this one it was on my list of things to do but i just didn't end up getting it until this point in the process if you will anyway if you hold down an apple pencil it'll automatically straighten the line for you and then you can just edit where it stops and starts do you know how happy yet pissed off i was when i figured that out because for almost more than three hours i wasn't utilizing that tool and that would have saved me so much time anyway can't dwell on the power Okay, so draft three. This sketch. This is where things get fun because I actually do a good job and I'm very happy with the outcome. And yeah. So, um, one hour and 30 minutes of progress, right? So, step one I added the reference photo already uploaded in grayscale so I could figure out what values were and where. And then I would sketch three to four shapes in a single layer. I made sure the shapes are not close to each other. I made sure to write the layer number on the shape in a distinct color so that it's easily searchable and use the color matching tool to match the desired values and then repeat until complete. So that was a whole doozy. But it was only an hour and 30 minutes and I got everything finished basically. So I decided to start with a grayscale that I would color match just to the picture itself. So then when I went in to add the colors, I would know what values they needed to be roughly. And the picture would still have some dimension to it. And in the end, I only ended up using 16 layers for all the shapes, mind you. Before, of course, because I just mentioned this like two seconds ago, I had used, I initially needed to use over 40 shapes, right? 40 layers. So being able to troubleshoot and make things better made things so much better. Anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit about choosing the color scheme because it has a lot to do with why I named it what I named it. So. When I'm painting, I feel like I have a limited number of colors to choose from, so I just pick a few and then go with it. For instance, hold on. Those are almost all of my paints. And it's like, yeah, there's an endless variety of you know possibilities you know the possibilities are endless but i like to choose from my already available assortment because that's what makes my brain happy so choosing the color scheme for this painting piece of art if you will felt really difficult because i just had so many options like the possibilities were literally endless i didn't have to mix colors or anything i could just choose one and then i could just 
take it from the little circle and then drop it where I needed to drop it and boom it's that color which is just so wild and crazy to me because I'm not used to digital art but I'm like oh yeah that's how that works anyway so yeah I just had so many options but you know I wanted this piece to be colorful but not obnoxiously neon almost how you might have thought it was at the start of my second draft i also wanted it to feel calm but not boring and i wanted to use pink because that's my favorite color and it's also feb it's february next month but anyway so i ended up using a color palette from another picture that i took and i just created a color palette in a different file so in a new document a new, I, don't know, I don't know what it's called but in a new document i imported the color reference photo and then i just used the color selector tool to pick a few and then i reopened the main one that i was using and the color palette was already there i think they just the color palette stays consistent throughout all of the files you open up or whatever it is some of the shapes I did take creative range over the colors because that's what I do, but a lot of them were pretty true to their values or at least you can get a sense of what they would be, so it definitely kept the dimension in, in the photo and all of that. And then once I got all the colors where I wanted them to be, I duplicated it, and when you duplicate something in Procreate, it still keeps all the history, so I still had all the layers and everything, which, I mean, if you do something like that in Canva, it does that too, so I guess that is pretty common of a thing to happen, but again, I'm just not used to this, so it's all new and exciting for me. So anyway, I duplicated the sketch to add the final touches, and I always think that my favorite part in creating a piece is adding the final touches because I feel like the lines just bring the whole piece together and make it pop, make it look more refined, and it's just when I start to get really excited um, about what it's going to look like because, you know, I have a vague image in my head of what it might look like, but then seeing an actual thing, like seeing the actual thing is so cool. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> figure out if I wanted the outline to be white or black so I just ended up doing one of each which was also such a simple thing to do and if I tried to do that on a painting one not only would it take me twice as long because I would physically have to paint two different things I mean yeah that's it it was just the time time consuming so time consuming anyway the white outline did only take about 30 minutes the black outline only took five because then i used the fill tool and made sure all of the white lines were connected there was one little part that wasn't but then i fixed it and um uh, yeah so the outlines total for both the black and the white took less than 40 minutes which is awesome pause because i didn't even tell you what i named the piece yeah it's in the caption but still right so i named it eco design because this word means this it didn't really roll off the tongue right so then i looked up words that meant something similar to that if you're combining your ecosystem with design of buildings and stuff right eco design like eco design eco design and it's my design so i just got a kick out of the name but eco design one is the white one because it's the one that i came up with first and then eco design two is the black one because it's the one that i came up with second so, uh, important takeaways slash considerations. Before starting a project, be sure to determine your goals because it's much easier to work backwards from there. For instance, if I wanted to use Procreate, I need to download Procreate. I need to make sure I have, what is it, like $13 so that I can download Procreate and need to make sure my debit card or whatever is connected to my Apple account so that the money is there for when I download Procreate, right? So if you start from where you want to be, then you can work your way there as opposed from just thinking, oh, I'm going to get some paints from the store for a project that I'm going to work on. But you don't really know the project that you're going to work on, so you just get a bunch of random stuff. 
And then once you get home from the store, you didn't even really get what you needed because you didn't know what you're gonna do. And that applies to a lot of things, not just art, you know? Anyway, if you think there's an easier way to do something, there probably is. If you don't know how to do something, try to use these resources to figure it out. People you know, YouTube, Pinterest, and Google. Pinterest is a search engine, mind you. It's a very much more visual one than Google, but it has a lot of good information if you know what to search. And then if you still don't know something and it's art related, then you can ask me. I would suggest maybe commenting because I don't look at my Instagram very much. I should, but that's just not on the top of my list. YouTube's on the top of my list, which is why I'm here. <laughs> anyway, so um, also, Abstract art isn't inherently easy or mindless. I feel like I see a lot of things on Pinterest and just in general where it's like, oh, easy geometric wall art for your living room. That's fine. It has its time and place, but I think an artist's value comes into play when they are going out of their way to create something in a thoughtful way whether it's using a story or design or you know what they have in mind ha <laughs> i got it rhymed <laughs> so for instance i wouldn't consider this piece of art you know easy or mindless in any way even though it might look simple there was still a lot of learning that i put into it to get to this piece it's something that had a lot of heart behind it, a lot of intention behind it, and I think that's important. So, so yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, but I hope you enjoyed my creative process and learning more about, you know, what I was doing, how long it took. Also, this took me over several days, even though it was in a few sittings, just because I would get tired of just zooming, zooming. Anyway, but... The next time I do a picture in Procreate, it's going to be a lot quicker, which is awesome. My turnaround time for my video is going to be a lot quicker, which will be awesome. And maybe I'll learn even new things based on what I'm doing and I can make new little tutorials and hopefully have new information to share. But yeah, if you have any questions about anything, definitely leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video, hopefully.